wrong. I do not miss that sound. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As always, I really, 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 really appreciate it. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny, and if this is your first video of mine, please note. <laughs> that this video is a little different than what I normally do. I know that my channel is more geared towards beauty things, makeup, curly hair, all that fun jazz. But if you follow me on Instagram or here on, on YouTube, you will know that I recently became a mom. And when I say recently, I mean like nine months ago. <laughs> Time is going by so fast. Nine months ago, I had the honor and privilege of becoming a mommy. I have been wanting to film this video for probably like two to three months, but I just really struggle because since my channel is more geared to, towards beauty, sometimes I do get a little hesitant when I veer off of that and I touch on other subjects, but I got an overwhelming amazing positive feedback on the video that I posted recently on my mastitis. If you guys haven't checked it out, go ahead and do so. I posted a video, a get ready with me, and I talked about my journey with getting mastitis, pretty much what happened, what I did, and all that stuff. I was completely, completely blown away at the feedback that I got. So many of you reached out to me, like personally, whether it was through an email, through a DM, even clients and people that I personally know sent me text messages thanking me for that video. And I was just really, really blown away. I'm the type of person that I believe that the universe tells us things and I feel like this past week or two weeks, I feel like like the world has been yelling at me like to film this video. I would say in the last two weeks, I've had a handful of women reach out to me on Instagram asking me about my journey with exclusively pumping. So I have been exclusively or I exclusively pumped because I'm no longer pumping. I haven't pumped for like about a month and a half now. And I did it for about seven and a half months exclusively. That's all I did. It's no coincidence that so many women in the past like two weeks have reached out to me. That means that people want to hear what you have to say about something that is so personal and sometimes even a little bit taboo to talk about. So I feel like even up to this morning when I woke up, I was still struggling like, am I really going to film this video? But here I am. I don't know why I get nervous about filming things like this. I guess it's because it is personal and because it's a little bit different than what I normally do. But I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I feel like I want to. And if this could help just simply one person, that's literally all I need in order to be satisfied and happy with recording this video. Now with that said, I want to make it very clear that this video is just me, a normal person, a normal mom, not an expert. I have one baby. I am not certified in anything. I, I, I am just the most regular person giving my story to you in hopes that it will help. So this video is not about how to be perfect. This video is not about how to do things the right way versus the wrong way. This video is just about how I did it. I want to be as real, as transparent, and as open with you because I know that there was a handful of people who were like that with me during my journey and these people completely changed my life because they're honesty, their transparency was everything that I needed to feel human and to feel like, okay, wow, like I'm not alone. That is the purpose of today's video. Before getting started, I just want to say if you're watching this video, there is a chance that you are either a mom, recently became a mom, about to become a mom, thinking of becoming a mom, whatever stage you're in right now, I just want to congratulate you. I'm so excited for you. Becoming a mom really has been the best thing that has ever happened to me. So just thinking about the fact that you're going through it, I'm just excited for you. So congratulations. Okay, so now let's really get down to why we are here. And I know I just said that it is wonderful and it is the best thing that's ever happened to me. However, it has also been the hardest, most difficult thing that I have ever done in my life. <laughs> So I started pumping when Aria was like about a week old. The reason why I made this decision was because she wasn't latching very well. I got really, really nervous because she had gone like, I think it was like almost a full day without going 
number two. And I was very alarmed. I was very nervous. I started to like really, really freak out. I really genuinely had such a hard time getting her to latch. When I was at the hospital, I saw two lactation specialists. One of them stayed with me for, I kid you not, like an hour and a half. And for an hour and a half, we were trying to get Aria to latch and it was just very difficult. We were having a hard time. Pretty much what I was doing is I was like hand expressing into her mouth because she was just having a really hard time actually latching and bringing up the, at the time it's not milk because I wasn't producing any milk at the moment. I was producing the colostrum. So finally we're home with Aria and I am really struggling to get her to latch and like I mentioned then the, the almost the 24 hours passes by without her going number two so that's the moment where utter just fear took over me and I made the decision that I was going to pump now it was not an easy decision for me to make I really really genuinely from the bottom of my heart I wanted to do booby but at that moment I said well it doesn't matter what I want anymore what matters is what's going to be best for my daughter and just to kind of give you guys an idea why I was so I guess like headstrong about pumping is because while I was in the hospital I sort of developed a little bit of a fear of formula now there's nothing 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 wrong with formula as a matter of fact Aria right now is doing a combination of breast milk that I had stored with formula and it is going amazing however the first night at the hospital I had to supplement with formula because I had gestational diabetes so when you have gestational diabetes what I was explained to in the hospital is that it is customary where the baby will have a combination of breast milk and formula because you don't want their sugar to drop so immediately when Aria was born she was given a formula and then she was given breast milk and then we pretty much like alternated it was like breast milk and formula now the first this was like for the first 24 hours and you guys <laughs> Aria's first night at the hospital was the scariest scariest thing that I have ever ever experienced so at this moment it has it is nighttime it is time for us to go to bed everyone leaves and Aria was just not having it not having it she was very cranky my husband and i looked at each other we were like ghosts we were exhausted it had been like more than 24 hours since we had gotten any sleep and we just looked at each other and we were like we're f <laughs> we are so screwed like what are we gonna do so she had a really really hard time the nurses tried to help me like it was just she was not having it and from my understanding usually babies on their first night just you know how it is newborns all they do is sleep so it you know it was a little uncommon so something was going on so then the following day the nurse practitioner that was there made the decision that she thought we should have been the 24 hours and Arya's sugar hadn't dropped she was perfect so she said okay well we are ready to remove formula and we're only going to do breast and of course I was like super excited so I was like yeah let's do it from that moment on <laughs> The change that Aria went through was, I mean, we were like, is this the same baby? She was so peaceful. I don't think Aria cried. Like the entire rest of the time that we were in the hospital, I don't think she cried. So as a first time mommy, I developed a, I believe now to be an irrational fear of formula because the only thing that changed between the first night and the second night was the formula. The first 24 hours of her life, granted, there's a lot going on, it's a scary world. She was probably like, somebody get me back to where I was. But the biggest change between that and the following night where she was like an angel and like slept the whole time, and she was just comfortable and good, it was removing the formula. So in my mind, I said, formula equals my life is over. <laughs> so that is probably what geared in me and pushed me to pump exclusively for seven months. Now, I just wanna stop right now and let you know that this is really, really difficult. Now, I did not get to breastfeed, so I'm not saying that it is more difficult than breastfeeding, but I do not want to give the impression that this in any way, shape, or form is easy. I found it to be very, very difficult, and a lot of times it made me cry. <laughs> so I just say that to say this. If you don't want to do this, and if you feel like this is going to make you miserable, and you feel like this is not what you want to do, don't do it. 
don't do it don't feel guilty it's okay not to want to pump it's okay to just find another way that works for you i just want you to feel encouraged to do whatever whatever is gonna make mom happy happy mom happy baby the best thing that you could give your baby is a happy mom everything else comes second I did not start off with a huge, huge supply. I pumped a very small amount at first. I was not like an overproducer or anything like that. So I started with a very, very small amount. But luckily, and you know, I thank God all the time, I ended up with a huge freezer filled with stored milk from how much I started to produce later on. So at the beginning, if I remember correctly, thank God I'm doing this video now because it's crazy how us moms, we just it's almost like for our sanity we forget everything right so at the very very beginning i was pumping probably like about two ounces two and a half ounces per pump i used to store them in these little containers um that is like about up to here and any bottle two ounces two and a half ounces is like about right here now this is per pump not per booby now imagine if it's two and a half ounces per pump per boob i was pumping like about one ounce a little bit over one ounce so when you're done after all your hard work and you take these bad boys off and you look at it and you see one ounce you kind of want to kill yourself <laughs> so if you are new to pumping and your baby is still very very young or your milk is just barely coming in do not be alarmed if you are barely pumping anything it is very normal that at the beginning, you don't pump a lot. The whole like pumping, milk, breastfeeding, it all works on a supply and demand. So at the beginning, there was no demand. So then as the baby starts to latch on and everything starts going, then your body starts to think like, oh, okay, wait, hold on. There is a demand for my milk. Let me start producing the milk. That is sort of how pumping works. Just like breastfeeding, the more milk you want, the more you have to tell the body to supply. So when Aria was like about two weeks old, I was starting to get very nervous because I was starting to feel like what I was pumping was not enough. Like she was starting to ask for more than what I was pumping. So pretty much at that point, I think maybe she was like at three ounces that she was drinking or like three and a half ounces. And then per pump, I was still like about the two maybe three ounces. So it's almost like every pump, I was a little bit short. So it's almost like I had to like double pump like pump twice before her feeding. So around that time, I decided to power pump. So power pumping is sort of like imitating cluster feeding. So usually cluster feeding is when your baby wants to just constantly eat like back to back. Like let's just say your baby normally nurses every like two to three hours. Now your baby wants to nurse like every hour. That actually helps with supply. So then I wanted to do sort of imitate the same thing with my pumping. At that moment, I knew that it was a supply and demand. So I just said, okay, well, I just need to pump more to tell my brain, to tell my body, I need more. Now, <laughs> this is one of those moments where I'm going to be so real, so transparent. I do not know if what I did was right. I'm just saying this is what I did and it worked for me. Now, when I think back on it, I'm like, well, <laughs> that was a little crazy, but it worked. So what I did at that moment, Arya, luckily for me, at night, she was giving me stretches of sleep. So she was like about two weeks and then she was already sleeping for like about four hours. So usually like around the same time, like around 11, like 10 or 11, I knew that she was gonna go down and she was gonna give me like about a four hour stretch of sleep. So what I would do is, and I did this for like about a week, I would put her down, I would go make myself coffee and I would stay up. I would stay up the night, she's sleeping, my husband's sleeping. I would stay up and I would pump every hour. Now, if you guys go on Instagram, Instagram is amazing for a lot of like how to's and like little things that you could find. You can find different graphs and different schedules on power pumping. At that moment, I didn't really think to go on Instagram and find this. I went later on and found it. This is just what I decided to do. I would drink my coffee, I would stay up on my bed, and then I would pump. So I would pump 
And then I would put the milk away. I would time myself like about an hour later, I would pump again. I would put it aside. And I did this for like about three hours. So for three hours, I sat in every hour on the hour, I would pump. I really, really do feel like this helped my supply. Now, <laughs> I understand what it is that I am saying and sleep when you have an infant it is golden we don't have a lot of it so staying up when you could be sleeping I mean you be the judge of that Aria was a great sleeper so I knew that during the day she was also going to give me stretches of sleep where I was going to be able to catch up on my sleep the reason why I did this at night was because that was her longest stretch of sleep and because I just kind of felt like the day was calm nobody wanted to come visit it was just, there was something about nighttime that I felt like the world turned off and then I could do this without any interruption so I know it's a little crazy <laughs> And oh, and by the way, it was American coffee. I wasn't having espresso. And I know that a lot of people are like, oh my God, you were having coffee when you were breastfeeding. Yes. Yes, I was. But you know what? I didn't know what else to do. And the truth is that Ari has been a great sleeper and it wasn't affecting her sleep. So since I didn't see that it was affecting her sleep, it was helping my milk supply. I said, hey. Eh. It's working, so why stop, right? So that's what I did, and I did that for like about a week. I would say that after I did that, I started to now pump probably three, like a solid three, three and a half, and at this point, sometimes four ounces per pump. So we're still talking about like per pump, it's still not per booby. So now per pump, so I really do feel like the power pumping definitely helped. Now the power pumping also helped my best friend. So I definitely feel like that is something that it's worth looking into. You don't have to do it my way, okay? There is other ways that you could do it. Go on Instagram, there's like great pages. But if you just look on the hashtag, like breastfeeding, power pumping, you'll get so, so much information. I also started to do things and take supplements that really helped. So I was doing oatmeal every morning because oatmeal is, it is said to help increase your supply. So I did oatmeal, it was terrible for my weight, but it worked and it was delicious. I also did the mother's milk tea this tea and by the way i'm gonna go ahead and add like everything in here the majority of the things that i have can be purchased on amazon so i'll go ahead and i'll put the link in the description box below i hated the way this tasted so i would mix it with linden tea so i would do a little bag of linden tea a little bag of the mother's milk and i would drink this every day um either once or twice a day during the day but definitely at night i would have my mother's milk tea now the most important thing is hydration Hydration is so incredibly important for your supply. If you are dehydrated, the first thing that goes is your milk. And now I know that as mommies, like we're so like involved with the baby and life is so chaotic. I mean, listen, going and stopping what you're doing to go get a glass of water is, I know it is not easy. Grab bottles of water and literally leave them like all over the house. Leave them some in the baby's room, some in, like in your nightstand, just leave them everywhere so it's just easy. You you grab and you have water because keeping hydrated is the most important thing that you could do I really struggled with this because I the truth is I don't drink a lot of water and I never drink as much water as I should but I really made such a conscious effort I put like little reminders on my phone I did what I just told you guys where I would just leave bottles of water pretty much everywhere so that whenever I did remember I would go and at that point I would chug the water so I also did lactation cookies I will go ahead and I'll link in the description box below the Amazon cookies that I got and I also got some from Target both of them delicious i mean these lactation cookies were so good again not great for your waistline i actually ended up putting a little bit of weight but at that point i really didn't care about my weight i just cared about my milk the other thing that i would take daily is this mother's love more milk this is like a herbal supplement and it is in like a little droplet oh i got a whiff of it so these drops you can take four times a day the droplets i was doing that and i'm here to tell you that this tastes like shit. This tastes really bad. Tastes terrible, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like, and I just got a whiff of the smell right now and I'm like, Ugh, it is bringing back memories. But I very honestly feel like out of everything that I did, lactation cookies, the mother's milk, everything, I saw the biggest difference with this. When I started taking these drops, I would say like about 
a week later I saw about an ounce increase in my supply now I didn't take this the whole seven and a half months I probably took this for two months once I felt like my supply was like much higher and I wasn't needing as much help I stopped taking this however if my supply ever took like a little bit of a plunge something happened I forgot to drink water whatever it is I'd go back to this and it would always always help so this was very very useful and I highly recommend it now the only thing is I didn't experience this but there are some people that have said that this one in particular does give the baby colic or makes the baby gassy I didn't experience anything like that thank goodness but that is something to keep in mind my schedule was very very strict at the beginning so after i did the power pumping i only did that for like about seven five to seven days after that my schedule was i would pump about every two to two and a half hours religiously around the clock at night i was giving myself like stretches of three hours three and a half hours but during the day it was like on the clock every two and a half hours I would go and pump definitely having a schedule like that I felt for me was one of those other things that really really helped because I was telling my body constantly all day long you need to produce more milk you need to produce more milk so then that little by little helped me to increase my supply please don't be overwhelmed and alarmed that was what I did at the beginning now as time progressed I did stretch my time from like three and a half four months to like five five and a half months I did every like five hours till eventually like towards the end I was pretty much pumping like about two to three times a day that was all I needed because my supply was so much bigger and your body does regulate once your supply is going you can tweak things and your body will regulate the middle of the night pumping and I know that this is horrendous if you are working on your supply and you're trying really hard to sort of create a little stash because I felt for me that creating a little stash was really important just because it just helped me it gave me peace of mind and it helped lower or my stress level if I felt like she wasn't eating exactly what I was pumping so for like about two weeks it was like whatever I pump she would eat and that was just giving me a lot of anxiety just because I just felt like what if one day she's like hungry earlier and then I haven't pumped so it was very very difficult so for me I wanted to start creating a little stash so that it was like as I'm pumping I'm putting that in the refrigerator but she already has a bottle that's ready to go for her that's sort of like the system that I wanted if that's sort of what you want to do and that's what you're working towards please do not attempt to skip your nighttime pumping please don't ask me what it is about it but it is crucial <laughs> And I know it's one of those things where I'm like, is this some kind of sick joke? I don't know what it is about nighttime, but I would always pump the most. And I'm not talking about a couple of drops more. I'm talking about a significant amount more at night. Now, the good news is you're not going to have to do the nighttime pumping forever. I probably did the nighttime pumping for maybe like four months, but progressively I was able to stretch it out. At the beginning, I was pumping like every three hours and then it was like every four hours and then every five hours, six hours. And then eventually towards the last like I would say probably two to two and a half months that I was exclusively pumping. I didn't have to do a nighttime pumping. I would just wake up a little bit earlier. And the first thing that I did was pump. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You just want to continue or at least I encourage you to continue to do it while you're working on your supply to go up. So the system that I did with Aria that worked really well for me was the pitcher system. I had two of these. I bought these on Amazon. I love them. It brings little tops with like the little rubber. So I felt like the milk was very, very secured and I didn't have to worry about it getting contaminated or anything like that. So I would pump, put it in a separate little container. Once that milk was cold, then I would transfer it over to the beaker. The next pump, I would then do the same thing. I would pump. I would transfer the milk to the smaller container. I would put that in the fridge. And by the way, this is in the fridge also. So both things were in the fridge. The next time that I pumped, I would pump and then I would pour the milk that was in the smaller container. I would pour it into the beaker and then the freshly pumped milk, I would now put it in the smaller container. So once a full day's passed, so then usually at nighttime, I would grab the milk and I would prepare all of Aria's bottles. So if at the moment she was having like five 
five bottles, six bottles a day, I would prepare all of them or as much as I had, I would prepare all of them and I would put them in the fridge ready to go. Now, I've always given Aria cold milk. I know to some people that might be like, but it worked. It worked for everyone. She really never ever complained about it. I, it was so much easier for me. I never had any indication that she wasn't happy with it. As a matter of fact, till this day, I still feel like Aria really enjoys cold milk she's like that also with her baby food she loves yogurt and sometimes i even give her her baby food cold and she just loves it so for us it worked out now if it doesn't work out for you and your baby doesn't like cold milk what you could do is like have all the bottles ready and before you know like maybe like 20 minutes before you know it's time to give them the, mod the bottle what you could do is just run the bottle under hot water i just felt like having all of the bottles prepared really set me up for success. I have a two story house so I did keep a small fridge in my second floor so that I never had to like come downstairs. Nobody has time for like extra work like that. So I would prepare everything and I felt like that was one less thing in the moment I had to do. It wasn't like, oh, she's hungry, let me go make her a bottle. It was like, oh, she's hungry, literally grab the bottle out of the refrigerator and just simply give it to her. I really felt like those little things like being organized in that way really helped me to succeed with my pumping. I'm sending you all my good juju that eventually you are going to get to the point where you are going to have to start to freeze the milk. My favorite bags to use to store milk were these right here and I will link them in the description box below. Target also has like really, really good ones. Now what I would do is I would usually have, like I said, I would set up Aria's like full day. So I would fill up my beaker. At nighttime, I would prepare all of her bottles and then I would leave about one bottle in the beaker and then the rest of the milk I would then freeze my recommendation to you is just freeze small amounts I would freeze like about four ounces that once you defrost the milk you have to use it in 24 hours so it's just easier to work with smaller amounts versus like larger amounts I started off with the spectra by the way, I don't know if you know this, but a Spectra is covered by a lot of insurance. I will go ahead and in the description box below, I will add the website that I use. This Spectra, plus it came like with a whole little package. It came with like a baby bag, the whole bundle. I wanna say it was like 200 something dollars and I think I got it for like 30 bucks because my insurance covered the majority of it. So in case you didn't know that, that's very, very useful. I'll go ahead and I will link that in the description box below. So I started out with the Spectra and I thought it was went really well I don't have any complaints about the spectra as far as like comfort wise it was very comfortable I was never in any pain while I was pumping so that's what I started off with I didn't have anything else to compare it to but the suction on the spectra I now realized it was not fully expressing my milk but I did get mastitis early on in my journey and I believe that it was because or I was even told by the doctor that it was because I wasn't fully expressing my milk so I I would say around when Aria was like maybe like my gosh it's so crazy how quickly we forget these things so when Aria was probably like closer to like three months I invested in the baby Buddha pump Ta -da! so this is the baby Buddha I had somebody recommend this to me and I'm so thankful and grateful to her because this quite honestly changed my entire entire pumping experience at this moment I was stuck to a wall the spectra is not hand free and so pretty much every time I pumped I had to be stuck to a wall and being stuck to a wall when you have a newborn it is a nightmare so this is a bit of an investment it's like close to $200 but if you are someone who you you're already in this journey and you feel like you want to continue to do this I really do genuinely feel like this is a great investment it was kind of difficult for me at the moment but I made the investment and I'm so so happy that I did if anything I kind of wish that I would have gotten it earlier <laughs> the baby Buddha is actually a wireless pump this is what it looks like. It comes with a strap where you could put around your neck and it brings these flannels. Now I use this for about, probably like about a month. Now when I started using the Baby Buddha, my increase in milk really, really increased. And I started to very quickly, like about maybe a week to two weeks in, I started to pump double what I was pumping before. Now is the moment 
when Aria was like about four months or so, like anywhere between three to four months, now is when I start to feel like my milk is really increasing. And at this point is when I feel like, wow, I'm really, really pumping a lot. When I started to use the Baby Buddha, I started to pump anywhere between four to six ounces per booby. So it was quite the difference than what I was experiencing with the Spectra. So this is what the Baby Buddha comes with. However, I invested in the free meat cups. Now this is something else that I felt like completely changed my pumping experience. So every time I had to pump, it was almost like I had to like undress myself. And I remember a couple of times like I had to pump while I was like working and I had to go to the, my, my car and it was like, I don't have tents in my car, which just made my life a whole different level of complicated but it was like every time I was gonna pump I had to almost remove all my clothes because I had to put the pumping bra on and it was just a, a lot it just it felt like a lot I couldn't really wear everything I wanted to wear I felt like my wardrobe was very limited it was just very complicated especially since at this point I was still doing it like every three hours you have a lot of guests that come over your house when you have a newborn and you know there was a couple of days where it's like in the morning somebody would come visit and then in the afternoon and the truth is like I had to continue to pump and that's another thing like I had to strip myself off of any sort of embarrassment I had to become very open with the idea of like pumping in front of people because I'm like this is the only way that I could do this and then first of all I'm very social so I don't like to miss out on anything so it's like I did not excuse myself to another room I was like no we're, like, we're all gonna hang out and then I'm gonna pump while we all hang out because I don't want to be by myself pumping because of that I decided to invest in the free me cups and you guys this 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 is life changing. So the Free Me Cups is separate than the Baby Buddha. They're two different companies that are just simply compatible with one another. And the way it works is right here, you see that little hole? So this gets inserted into the little hole. And then this pretty much goes inserted into your bra. Your nipple gets aligned there. You do both of them, you turn it on and you pump. This, you guys, completely changed my experience with my pumping. And if it wasn't that I got the nipple situation, like if you watch my video, you know, I feel like because of the baby Buddha and the free me cups, I was ready to exclusively pump all the way until Aria was a year old. I had gotten into a groove where it was so comfortable. I had gotten it down to a science and it was all because I could literally pump everywhere and anywhere. I pumped with clients. My favorite was pumping while I was in the car because I was like, well, I'm already driving and it was so comfortable. It never got in my way. I would just pump and then once I was done, I would just leave it there comfortably because I did not even feel it. When I got to where I was getting, I would just take it out. I always traveled with like a little lunch box. I'd put everything away and it was just so simple. So this pump and these free me cups absolutely changed my pumping experience. The suction in the Baby Buddha also really, really helped me to increase my supply. And then I also feel like everything in combination really, really helped. Alrighty guys, so that's pretty much just the jits of it. I really do feel like I could talk about this all day because there's just so many parts to it, but that's pretty much what I did. What helped me out the most was a combination of supply and demand with all these little things, but also uh, changing the pump really, really helped me. I tried so many different things. This is what worked for me and I hope that it works for you. Now, everyone is different, okay? And there are actual medical things that could be happening which could prevent you from producing milk. If you feel like you're trying everything and your supply is just not where you feel it should be because you've given it its time, you're doing everything, you're doing the supply and demand, there could be something happening. So you might wanna either reach out to your doctor, reach out to a lactation specialist. The lactation specialists have so much knowledge they can help you and they can just customize everything to your needs that's why i think they're absolutely wonderful because it is about you and your needs and your baby's needs it's not like generalized you know so i'm thinking about starting just a little series on my channel nothing separate like no different channel nothing just something very simple where us women we could just sit down and be very real with each other i feel like lately i've had the pleasure of having such real raw honest conversations with a lot of women my line of work really allows me to connect with women in a very special way uh, while i'm doing their makeup a lot of times we're we're just talking we're venting we're just expressing ourselves and the conversations usually end up with 
why don't we talk about this more? Like, why don't women talk about these things? Like, why is this so taboo? Like, we need to be more real. We need to, and just for the, in the last couple of weeks, I've really experienced this several times. And so I started to think, well, you know what? I have a platform and my channel, although I mentioned earlier, is more geared towards beauty and towards curly hair and all that fun jazz the truth is at the end of the day i am here to serve like i want to serve my viewers i want to serve the people who follow my channel so that's what i'm here for so whether it be like serve in teaching you how to do your makeup and encouraging you to love your curly hair or in helping you feel like a real woman in real life that's what i'm here for so if you guys would be interested in having a little series, I was thinking about calling it like women in real life, <laughs> where we just simply sit down and we chit chat and we talk about real life and how we do things and all the struggles that we go through. Uh, I'm definitely interested. Let me know if you guys are interested. I feel like I would absolutely love that. And it doesn't have to be motherhood related, especially nowadays, there's this idea that women are just supernatural and we're just never broken, never hurt. Like we just know how to do all these things and the truth is we don't especially us moms mom you don't have to have it figured out you can actually say i don't know what the hell i'm doing <laughs> and that is exactly what i went through i didn't know what the hell i was doing and this is why i say i am no expert i am just a normal person who went through this and i figured out how to make it work for me and i always say if i can just help one person that's good enough for me. So this is pretty much it, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to let me know that you like it. Also, don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. I do upload every Wednesday. That is my schedule. And that's it. You guys, I love you so, 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 so much. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. I mean, you look like you're gonna blow up. I saw. Oh my god.